Hello, friends. I have a word tonight I want to share with you about how much God loves you and about he, how he can intervene in your story. He, he, he knows you, he loves you, he cares about you, and he's going to help you. My title tonight is Jesus is Calling for You. It comes from the book of Mark in the 10th chapter, beginning with verse 46. The Bible says, and they came to Jericho, Christ and a, a gaggle of people, his disciples and others, passing in and in through Jericho. And as they went out of the city of Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude Blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. Then many in the crowd warned him to be quiet. But he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy upon me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called and they said to the blind man, be of good cheer, rise, Jesus is calling for you. And he, throwing aside his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And when Jesus saw him, he said to him, what do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to Jesus, Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said, go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. Loving Father, anoint your servant and your people and your word. Speak to us and let this be a keros moment of breakthrough and visitation, a divine disruption, I pray, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I want to talk about this amazing story and its impact in our lives about Christ and how he cares and how he can change our whole world in one moment. My first point is this, no matter how long you've had it, Jesus is able to heal it. It's time for a divine interruption of your life's routine. So this man, blind Bartimaeus, I admire him as other biblical figures because instead of pouting, instead of being engulfed with self-pity, think about it, he's blind, born blind, suffering under the great you know, the great penalty of not having uh, uh, eyesight. But it's, instead of doing nothing, he does something. He goes to the road, the most traveled road probably, and sat there and begged. So his routine was to find his spot, and he would, by, by the garment he wore, people knew that he was a beggar, and he would beg for people's benevolence. And so he would do that every day. He's in this uh, you know, routine, really a rut of life. And it's not bad because he's doing as much as he could with what he had. So he's a fighter. And, and that part of his story attracts me to him because God can work with a fighter. And, and for, for, for you, my dear friend, God's going to help you if you've lost it, get your fight back. Get your I'm not going to quit attitude back. Get your get up and God's going to help you go forward attitude back. Get your I can do all things through Christ attitude. God's going to help you. And so he has been in this condition and it's so important because often the Bible will acquaint us with the duration. The Bible says that the man who's, who was laid by the, the pool of Bethesda was there 38 years, had an infirmity 38 years. The man at the gate of beautiful in Acts 3 was crippled his whole life, over 40, crippled his whole life. The woman with the issue of blood, 12 years. We have these specific amounts, usually when they're a, a, over a long period of time, because God wants you to know that no matter how long you've had it, Jesus is able to heal it. And that we would maybe take another look at things in our life, emotional, spiritual, physical, financial, relational uh, things, routines of life, ruts we that we've fallen into, and that we would allow God to speak to us about, you know what, this can change. This part of your life can change. It's a beautiful thing in his story that God gives us insight because he, he even though his eyes were blind, his ears heard. And it seems to me that that is one of the beautiful things of the, 
loving kindness of our God that when we have one part of our life that's not working, he allows there to be an accelerated, exaggerated, a multiplied sufficiency or proficiency in another part of our life. So maybe he's hearing what other people are missing because he can't see, he hears. And I just want to encourage you, no matter how long you've had trouble in your marriage, no matter how long you've had trouble believing for something, no matter how long you've been believing for a family member to be saved or for a business matter to be concluded or for the restoration of your life, no matter how long it's been, it's not too long for God. And God wants to reacquaint you with that, that the assurance, restoring your heart, that, that confidence that your God's able to do this, that nothing is impossible with God and nothing is impossible to those that believe. The second thing that we see about Bartimaeus is this, that faith comes by hearing. Faith is initiated by hearing and activated by speaking. So he heard about Jesus. So what happened when he heard about Jesus? Something inside of him awakened. His faith awakened. And so we know that principle from the Bible. The Bible says to us so plainly and beautifully in, in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, so then faith comes by hearing, and that hearing by the word of God. I would say this also conversely, fear comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of the enemy, the wrong words. So whatever is inside of us, whatever attitudes, good and bad, faith or fear, hope or hopelessness, they're all built on what we've been hearing, what we've allowed to be digested into our soul and then to our spirit. For us as believers, we build our faith by hearing God's word. By just listening to this simple message, you're going to have more faith because God's word releases faith. It awakens, strengthens, develops your faith as a believer. And God wants you to know that he's got it. He, he's got you. He's got a word for you. And in that word for you, he's strengthening your faith. And so the man heard about Jesus. He heard about the healer, the miracle worker, the, 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 the prophet, the, the, the Messiah, the, the, the Lamb of God. He heard about Jesus. When he heard about Jesus, he acted on what he heard. He acted on what he heard. And so in our lives, let faith in this season Fight the good fight of faith. Make sure that you're feeding your faith and starving your doubts. Feed your faith and starve your fears. Psalm 107 verse 20 says, God sent his word and healed them and delivered them from destruction. The power of God's word can heal every part of our life, our story, both things that are present, things are, that, that are within the touch of our own lives and things beyond that that we're standing and believing God for. That's what God's promise is for all of us as believers, that we would walk and live and stand in faith. Romans 10, verse 9 and 10 says, if you talking about how salvation comes, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God's raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Then it gives the principle, for with the heart one believes to righteousness and with the mouth confessions made to salvation. So those things are yoked together. With my heart, I believe faith has come. Revelation brings faith. And when faith comes, God's saying, you can have this. And when I say it, it becomes, I'm signing the contract. I'm initiating, I'm activating my belief in God. And it works. And so because he had faith now, what did he do? He began to cry out to Jesus. Cry out to Jesus. And, and this is so important. Because faith takes you to a point of boldness and confidence that, that nothing else in life can. Cry out to Jesus, my friend, about your family, your difficulty, about things that are happening that shouldn't be happening in your, in your marriage or children or business. Cry out to Jesus. And when people tell you to be quiet, cry even louder. So two things happened. He began to activate his faith. So he's He's heard and now he's operating in faith. He's, he's crying out for Jesus. Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. And, and people said around him, hey, hey, settle down, man. Hey, you're acting inappropriately. Hey, and for whatever reason, they, they began to, you know, to resist him, to condemn him, to, to combat him. But instead of being intimidated by those who had 
no request for Christ, who had no faith in that moment, that were just spectators or curiosity seekers or those along for the ride, he had, he had come to receive something. He got even louder. I just want to say in this season, don't let the devil steal your voice. Don't let him intimidate your bold confessions of Christ. If the devil is trying to shut you up, get louder. If the devil is trying to steal your praise, get louder. If the devil is trying to intimidate your request, get louder. Ask louder, be bolder in your petition to Christ. So instead of being intimidated, so it's, in, in, instead of letting people steal his miracle, it's not that those people were evil people, but the devil was using them because they didn't understand the promise of that moment. Often even people that love us will question and resist and, and mock or belittle and, 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 and fight against the things we're doing in faith. And, and you have to make sure that you don't let their unbelief or their lack of understanding stop your faith journey with Christ. When people tell you to shut up, get louder. When people tell you to stop prophesying, prophesy more. When people tell you to stop talking about Jesus, talk about him more. When people tell you to stop worshiping God with so much passion and joy, do it twice as much. Don't let the devil win through intimidation, okay? Intimidation is an aspect, it's a weapon of the enemy to try to steal your voice and stop your faith. So he got even louder. Jeremiah 33, 3 says this, Call upon me, God saying, I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you, not, which you do not know. Call upon me, God says, I promise I will answer and show you things that you don't know. In this season, there's a lot we don't know, isn't there? There's so much uncertainty, even as we are calibrating new scientific evaluations of what's happening and, and then appropriate behaviors. Everything's uncertain. It, you know, nothing is, is, is really all the way known yet. God says, don't let any of that intimidate you. Call upon me. I'll show you what you've been missing. I'll show you what you should do. I'll show you the right path. I'll show you what you need. I'll give you what you need in this season. Call upon me what happens. I will answer you. David said so beautifully in Psalm 34, I sought the Lord and he what? Heard me and delivered me from all of my fears. Wow. God heard him when he cried. Verse 6 of that same chapter, Psalm 34 says, This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. Call upon Jesus. Cry upon Jesus. Pray to Jesus. It's okay. Like David, he didn't describe this as a quiet or a sober or a, you know, unspoken prayer. He said, I cried out, man. My, my soul was overwhelmed. I, I became desperate in my petitions for help. I cried out to God and he heard me and answered me and delivered me out of all of my trouble. There's no trouble you're in God can't bring you out of. There's no fear in you that God can't take out of you as you call upon Jesus, 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 wonderful Jesus, son of David, our Savior, our healer. Oh, think about all that Jesus has. for. There's a couple more great verses in that same uh, chapter. Verse 15 says, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears open to their cry. Having four kids, especially when they were younger, you, as a parent, no matter how, how asleep you are, <clears throat> you can be in the middle of a perfect seven-level REM sleep. <clears throat> Excuse me. And when you hear a cry in the middle of the night, your baby's crying, it wakes you up because your ears are in tune to that child and every time you cry my precious friend my dear friend there's never been a time you've cried out to him and he has not heard you <laughs> the righteous cry out the Lord hears them and delivers them out of all their troubles out of all their troubles oh Jesus 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 like Bartimaeus Jesus son of David have mercy upon me Jesus my helper my savior my deliverer my provider my comforter, my counselor, help me, Jesus. Wow, he will deliver you like he delivered the great king of Israel, David. Your testimony will be the same. Bartimaeus cried out, and when they told him to be quiet, he got louder. I pray for a, 
anointing of boldness. I pray for a baptism of boldness in this, in this season. So instead of being shut up and instead of being pushed into the corner of intimidation and silence, you get louder. Louder in your faith, louder in your witness, louder in your joy, louder in your actions of love, louder in your steps of faith, louder in your prophetic determination to see God's purpose fulfilled in your life. Oh God, anoint us with that kind of boldness. When Bartimaeus got up and began to cry out, they said to him, after they rebuked him, they said, the master is calling for you. Be of good cheer. I just want to say to you, I felt to even entitle this message, Jesus is calling for you. The master is calling for you. He's calling your name. He's calling you to him. He's heard your cry. He stopped the entourage. Think about the, all these people. He stood still. He looked at the man and said, bring him to me. He called him. And Bartimaeus came. Now when Bartimaeus came, here's my next point. He had to make a quality decision. And his decision demonstrated his faith. He, he laid down, took off, and set aside his beggar robe. So that public announcement of his condition and of his need in life, his, his dependency, his dysfunction. So he took off his beggar's robe and laid it down before he came to Christ. Man, that's faith. And this is so important. My fourth point is this. God can't give you the new until you let go of the old. Leave it behind. You don't need it anymore. There were some things that we, that we use to carry us through hurtful seasons of life that God says, you don't need that anymore. You're not going to need those, that, that same kind of uh, uh, you know, drug, whatever behavior it is. You say, well, Pastor, I, you know, I, 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 you know there's, there's a lot of controversy about marijuana, so let me just jump in the middle of it. Well, Pastor, it's legal and it's helped us. Yeah, I appreciate all of that. If that's true, wonderful. But what if you get so healed you don't need it? What if Jesus is more powerful than medical marijuana or any other therapy? Okay, I'm not against drugs. I'm not against medicines. I'm not against, I, I'm, I'm not for everything. But what if Jesus is saying, you know what? That thing that you've been depending on, that beggar's coat, that's been important or necessary, you know what? You don't need it anymore. You don't need it anymore. Sometimes even in relationships, the Lord will separate us from relationships that we've been overly dependent on. I'm not talking about husbands and wives in the normalcy of family, but I'm talking about when someone steps into our world for a season to kind of carry us through that season, it's important that we, as we become healthy, as faith emerges, that we recognize, you know what? Thank you so much. Now I'm going to step into the freedom and the healing that God has for me. So there's some things we have to let go. God can't give you the new until you let go of the old. And whatever that means to you, faith will give you the wisdom on what to do, when to do, and how to do it in that arena of life. doesn't matter what it is, faith will give you the wisdom. Faith will help you. But it's important that we don't keep leaning on the wrong thing. After a while, when Jesus says, you know what, I'm going to straighten you up, and you don't need that anymore. You don't need that. Christ said to the man, take up your bed and walk. Christ will help us. Jesus will help us. Start carrying the testimony of the thing that we used to be dependent on. Instead of needing it, you're going to testify about how Jesus healed you and you're so healthy and you're so restored that you don't need it anymore. Whatever that garment is, whatever that condition of life is, we don't want to keep wearing the wrong garment the entirety of our life. Let me just step into kind of a counseling mode of it. We don't want to keep wearing the garment of victimhood our whole life. I'm sorry for whatever has happened in the past or presently in your story that is heartbreaking, that is traumatic or injurious. I get it. I've been through it. I've been in depression. I've been clinically, manically, suicidally depressed. I get all that. I have degrees in psychology. I get all of that. But I just want to tell you, Jesus Christ can heal your broken heart. He can heal you from any trauma. I got some pushback when I shared my testimony in California a few months ago and, and said, when we forgive people that have hurt us, God will make us forget the pain they caused us. 
Some people say, well, you know, I have pain in me that's never going to leave. Well, it could leave. There's literally nothing Christ can't heal you from. And so his faith released his actions. And he said, you know what? I know by the time I get to Jesus, I'm not going to need this coat anymore. I'm giving up it up now. It's interesting. He didn't let go of the, the coat after he was healed. He let go of the coat before his healing took place. Why? His faith had already determined his outcome. What did Christ say to him? Your faith gave you this miracle. Your faith has made you whole. So, so your faith has healed you, restored you, repaired you. And so that man came to Christ. He put down his coat. My, my fifth point is this. Christ remarkably, so here comes a blind man, and he, and he would have been led by others to Christ. And because there's such a, a motley crowd of all kinds of people, and so he, he's coming to Christ, and they're, and they're helping him, and he's standing before Christ. He is uh, overtly, apparently, visibly, undeniably blind. His need was not hidden from Christ. He was not, Christ was not ignorant of the man's physical infirmity. But the, the moment he walked up to Christ, Jesus said, um, what do you want me to do for you? Those great, nine great words, that great principle. Here's, here's what I found out in my marriage with beautiful Mary. When we first were married, I, 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 I bought her things for our anniversary. We're coming into a, a you know, Mother's Day anniversary and her birthday all in the same week here in a few days. And so when we were first married, I got her things that, that I thought she would like. And the longer I was with her, the more she helped me learn this. I should ask her what she would want instead of surprising her with things she didn't want. And now, after 41 years, I just give her money and say, go buy your present. She comes home and says, Here, here's what you got me, honey. And uh, it's broken down to that. But it's, it's good because she's happy. Now, here's my point. Jesus said... Tell me what you need, not to insult the man, but to release his faith. Because you have to say it before God will do it. Faith is initiated by hearing. It's activated by what? Speaking. With the heart, man believes. With the mouth, believes to righteousness. With the mouth, confessions made to salvation. So Christ says, tell me what you want. Tell me what you want. There's so much here because people say, well, you know what, if I'm praying for them, I say, is there anything you want me to pray for about? Well, I don't know, just, just uh, God to be kind to me. Well, he's kind to you, you know, you, you, every day he's kind to you. The idea of this, the more specific the request, the more dynamic the result. So faith, faith is like hitting the bullseye. The more you target a specific event, amount, a outcome, the more powerful your faith is because it's focused on that very specific thing. And he said, the man said that I might receive my sight. And Christ said, bingo, son, your faith has healed you. Your faith, his, his faith, what? Faith came when he heard about Jesus. Faith came when he shouted out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. Faith came when the man, threw his, when they said shut up, he got louder He's walking in faith, and his faith won't be deterred by those that don't have it. Faith was activated and demonstrated when he threw aside his, his bigger garment. Faith was activated when he stood before Christ. And Christ said, what do you want, son? And he said, I want to see. I want to see. In this season, I pray that your desire, your want, your prophetic purpose becomes a burning passion inside of you. So that when Christ said, what do you want me to do for you? You don't say, well, you know, just, just uh, you know, bless me. Well, he, he blessed you already. We say, you know what? I want my family saved. I want my child delivered. I want my, my marriage healed. I want my body healed. I want to see global revival. I want to see Phoenix have a move of God. I want to see CFTN uh, uh, filled with the glory of God. Whatever it is, let your faith be so specific that it becomes a powerful revelation of faith. That releases miracles and all kinds of good things. The more specific your request, the more dynamic your result. The Bible says this in Hebrews chapter 
11. Now faith, verse 1. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. What, what, so, so faith grows in the fertile field of hope. Hope builds the alphabet of faith. So people that have a joyful expectation of good, a general hopefulness about life because of the Holy Spirit's prom- and the word of God's promise inside of them are people that God easily constructs faith out of. Okay, faith is built. It's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So in the spirit, faith is as real as, it, as this wooden table. So faith is a substance. Christ often measured people's faith. He said, you have no faith, you have little faith, you have much faith, you have great faith. And so he measured the, both the quality and the quantity of their faith. It's a measurable, quantitative substance. And verse 6 says this it's about faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So it takes faith to please God. It takes faith to be born again. It takes faith to do anything in the kingdom of God. And then it, then it elaborates, gives us some insight, this beautiful scripture. For he that comes to God, what is faith? Comes to God. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He that comes to God must believe that he is. Okay. And that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Now here's, I love this. Because a lot of Christians believe that God is. But faith also has a determined outcome that's, that passionately you seek God for. And, is, and that God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Remember what Christ talked about prayer in Matthew 7? He said, ask and it will be given. I seek and you will find. Knock and it shall be opened. And he said this, everyone that asks receives. Everyone that seeks finds. And everyone that knocks, the door will be opened. And really it's a progression he said this, your faith grows to the point that you're seeking and then knocking. That there is a, a forcefulness in those prayer requests that is so powerful that it's, it's just like what Hebrews says, that you're diligently seeking him. He's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. That's what faith looks like in our lives. And this man, this man heard about Jesus. This man had faith and began to cry out, my friends, don't let your prayers be silent. Don't let the devil intimidate you. Don't let your worship be stifled. Don't let fear anything that the devil is trying to do against you. Don't let it happen. The Bible says in, in, in Mark chapter 11, Christ said, have faith in God. Right after a great thing had happened with a fig tree, he said, here's what he said, for surely I say to you, whoever will say to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe the things that he says will come to pass. He will have whatever he says. He will have whatever he says. Faith talks in bold sentences. Faith talks confidently about God's promise. Faith like this man said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. Faith won't be silenced. In this season, God's doing something. My friend, Jesus is calling for you. Jesus is inviting you to a breakthrough season. Jesus has stopped. He's looking at you. He knows your name. is calling you to him. Lay aside what you don't need. Raise your voice in prayer. And when the devil tries to shut you up when things, Pastor, I prayed and it got worse than get louder. Pastor, I prayed for salvation in my family, and they start, they, you know, everyone started acting crazier than normal. Then get louder, be more determined, be more passionate. Like this man who cried out even louder, Jesus, have mercy upon me. And then when Christ called for him, he laid aside what he no longer needed. In this season, God's unpacking some things that we don't need. Let him go. If he takes them, you don't need them. And there are some things in your story that you used to lean on that you don't need anymore. They're going to be a part of your testimony, not a part of your habit. And watch what God does for you. And when Christ, in this moment, when he says, what do you want me to do for you? May your prayer be so quickly like this man said, I want to see. I want to see. It was focused. It was specific. It was dynamic. Let your request to God be focused, specific, and dynamic about what he's going to do in your life, your store, your family, your finance, your business, your restoration, your health. 
God's going to help you. Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon your people. God, I thank you for miracles, signs, and wonders. I pray for the lost to be saved. I pray for those bound by any affliction of mind or body to be healed in the name of Jesus. And I pray, God, that there would be a, 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 an awakening, an uprising in the heart of your people of boldness, supernatural boldness and confidence to ask boldly, to step into confidence, to step into outrageous, uh, 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 faith-filled confessions of what you're going to do. Talk about what your future is going to look like. Speak the promises of God. Pray your prophecies. Pray your prophetic words. Speak God's word. Boldly declare what God's going to do in your story and watch what he's going to do. Speak to your mountain until it moves. Prophesy to your problem until it changes. Speak healing until miracles are released and watch what God does. Jesus is calling for you and Jesus is helping you and your faith is about to get you there. Let God in this season awaken faith and fulfill your promise and give you a miracle and that man walked with Christ the rest of the way. Your, your path's changing. Your direction's changing. Your future's changing. God's taking you somewhere in the name of Jesus and I can't wait to hear the testimonies of your story. Jesus is calling for you, my friend. God bless you. Thank you for listening to me tonight.